Okay, in this lesson we're going to look at the derivative of a product and the derivative of a quotient, and hence the product and quotient rules. And we'll first start off with just looking at the fact that um, we know the derivative of a sum or a difference is equal to the sum and or difference of the derivatives. But this doesn't work for products. And the best way to, so basically what we're saying right here is the derivative of a product, so the derivative of f of x times g of x does not equal f prime of x times g prime of x. And the question is why not? And so the best way to do that is to find what we call like a counter example. We want to find an example where this isn't true to show, uh, or where this is true, where, where um, the derivative of a product is not equal to the product of the derivatives. And so we start off with looking at a derivative that you know. The derivative of x squared is equal to 2x. So we've already done that derivative. And so now if we look at this, instead of looking at it as a power function, we'll look at it as just the product. We want the derivative of x times x, right? So the derivative of x squared should equal the derivative of x times x. And so let's suppose, I'm going to put a big question mark here, that the derivative of a product equaled the product of the derivative. So that would be d dx of x times d dx of x. Well we know the derivative of x is equal to 1, so that would be 1 times 1, which should equal 1, but we know that the derivative of x squared is not equal to 1, it's equal to 2x. So in finding one example where this isn't true, then we, can't, we cannot claim that the derivative of a product is the product of the derivatives. And so we'll start off by looking at this function, p of x equals x squared plus 1 times x cubed plus 3. And so we want to find p prime of x using the product rule. So we'll call the first binomial f and the second one g. So we know that p prime of x is going to be the first times derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. This is the formula right up here. Right? So first times the derivative of the second plus second times the derivative of the first is it just a way to help you remember it. And so we'll start to plug in. The first is x squared plus 1. Then we'd multiply that by the derivative of x cubed plus 3. And then we're going to add that to the second, so it's g, so x cubed plus 3, times the derivative of the first, so d dx of x squared plus 1. Now once you get familiar with this rule, you do not need to write the d dx of x cubed plus 3. You can literally just do the derivative in your head. So on this one, we're going to get x squared plus 1 times the derivative of x cubed plus 3, which is 3x squared, plus x cubed plus 3 times the derivative of x squared plus 1, which is 2x. I'm going to distribute, I'm going to get 3x to the fourth plus 3x squared plus 2x to the fourth plus 6x. p prime of x will equal 5x to the fourth plus 3x squared plus 6x. Now, here's the thing about the product rule. It, it works when you have a product, but you don't always need it. And so I actually just showed you how to use the product for a function that actually you didn't need to use the product rule on. Right, so I'm showing you how it works, but the other way to deal with this problem is, um, you know, I've got x squared plus 1 times x cubed plus 3. And so up until now we didn't have a way to take the derivative of a product, but we do have a way, and we know the rule, for taking the derivative of a polynomial. So the other way to deal with this would be to take p of x and just FOIL 
So take the, um, multiply this out, multiply the x squared plus 1 times the x cubed plus 3, and you may find that this is actually faster. So I'm first going to rewrite p of x. Remember, you know, algebraic manipulation helps a lot when taking derivatives. You don't always want to jump right in and take a derivative. See if you can um, manipulate the algebra a little bit. So I've got x to the fifth plus x cubed plus 3x squared plus 3. And that's just, that's just p of x. So I haven't taken a derivative yet. So now p prime of x, like the first derivative, we could just use the power rule, taking the derivative of a polynomial, 5x to the fourth plus 3x squared plus 6x. And you see that we get the same exact answer. So the question is, well, why would you even want to use the product rule if you could always just turn something into a polynomial? Well, because not all functions are polynomials, and we have what are called transcendental functions, like exponential functions, logarithmic. Um, for trigonometric functions, we have to use the product rule. And so just showing you an example of the power rule applied, but also a situation where you don't necessarily need it, well, let's look at Let's look at the, the next example, um, talking about higher powers of the derivative of e to the x. So later in this course, we will deal with derivatives of exponential functions more in depth, but the derivative of e to the x was a special one. We've talked about that. We know that d dx of e to the x is equal to e to the x. Right? We said that the derivative of e to the x is actually itself. And so this book introduces this derivative a little bit earlier than other books do, but I like the fact that it does because it allows us to look at some applications that we might not be able to look at until later on. So we're gonna, we know this, that the derivative of e to the x is itself, uh, which is kinda cool. Um, e, to, e is a pretty special number. It keeps proving itself to be so. It shows up in, you know, exponential growth and decay. We use it for um, compounded interest. And so in this case, we want to just look at a special case. We want to show that the derivative of e to some constant times x is equal to that constant times e to the kx. Again, there is something called the chain rule, which we're going to learn later. And that would also allow us to take the derivative of this. But we're going to just look for a pattern in finding derivatives. So I'm going to start with taking the derivative of e to the 2x. And so e to the 2x is the same thing as taking e to the x and multiplying it by e to the x. So we're taking the derivative of a product. Remember when you multiply and you have same bases, you just add the exponents. So I know this is my, so this is going to be my f and this is going to be my g. So it's first times the derivative of the second. Again, I'm not taking any shortcuts here. You can and eventually we will. Second, which is g, times derivative of the first. And so I know that the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So now I get e to the x times e to the x plus e to the x times e to the x, which is 2e to the 2x. So now let's look at just another, we'll do one more example, showing you one, again, we're not proving it right now, I'm just showing you a few examples and looking at a pattern, um, but we will prove this later. Um, so let's do d dx of e to the 3x, and so that would equal d dx of e to the x times times e to the 2x. And so I would have first e to the x times the derivative of the second, which we already we already know that the derivative of e to the 2x 
is 2e to the 2x plus second which is e to the e to the 2x times the derivative of the first which would just be e to the x. So now I get 2e to the 3x plus e to the 3x which equals 3e to the 3x. And so now I've established a little bit of a pattern here and then you'll have to trust me that we will absolutely prove that this is this works all the time uh, later in the course. So if we took d dx e to the 4x that's going to equal 4 e to the 4x. Right. And so we'll use this in some later problems. All right, so let's look at another... Actually, let's stop here. We'll come back in the next video and pick up the next problem.